Welcome back guys in this video we're gonna look at the general syntax of JavaScript so let's get started. So the first thing about JavaScript syntax is everything is case sensitive. So here's what I mean by that. Let's declare three variables and all of them in different cases. So we have three variables here. The first one is all capital letters. The second one has just the first character N as capital. And the third one has no capital letters in it. Now I'm going to log all these three variables to the console and see what I get. So here you see, I get one, two, and three. So this means JavaScript is treating these three variables as different variables because JavaScript is case sensitive. Variable with all capital letters is different from variable with the first capital letter and is different from the last variable which has no capital letters. Though all of them share the same name, but they have different capitalization, that's why JavaScript treats them differently. So this case sensitivity applies to everything in JavaScript, be it your variable names, function names, or classes. So the next thing that we're gonna look at is how do we name identifiers? So when I say identifiers, I mean the variables, functions, how do you name these? There are certain rules that you need to follow in order to name all your variables, functions, etc. in JavaScript. Let's look at those rules. So the first rule is that the identifier must start with a letter, an underscore, or a dollar. Let me make some space for you here. Yes, so the identifier must start with a letter, underscore, or a dollar. So let me show you some valid examples of identifiers. So name here does not start, it starts with the letter but doesn't contain underscore or dollar. Here you can see age. Age starts with an underscore here, and then you can see location. Location starts with a dollar here. So all these three are treated as valid identifiers by JavaScript. On the contrary, let's look at what would be an invalid identifier. Let me try naming a variable with a number instead of a character. So here you see JavaScript is shouting at me, this is invalid syntax. I can't even start a variable name with any other special character apart from dollar. So if I try to use percentage here, again, it gives me an invalid syntax. Even if I try doing something like this, it will not work. So all these are examples of invalid identifiers. Now here's the second rule about identifiers. The identifiers can only include letters, numbers, dollar, and underscore. Here are a few examples. This is a valid identifier. This does not start with a number. It starts with a character, but has a number in it. So something like this is what you can do. Here is another example. Here I am using underscore in between two words. This is something which you can do. Something like this is also valid. Dollar first name is equal to John maybe. So all these are valid identifiers. This is the correct way of naming your identifiers. Again, I'm repeating identifiers means the names of your variables, functions, constants, classes, etc. in JavaScript. We'll dive deeper into that. The general convention in the JavaScript world, however, is to use camel case. What is camel case? In camel case, the first letter of the first word is small and all the other words in your identifier start with a capital letter. For example, last name, first name. So this is camel case. Anything like this 
is the general convention. Here is another example. So this is the general convention camel case that is followed in JavaScript world. Now there are instances where different conventions are followed for different kind of identifiers. So functions, variables would usually use camel case and in case of classes you might be using capital camel case. So I would be talking about different naming conventions as we reach those topics throughout the course. The last thing I need to talk about in general syntax of JavaScript is about semicolons. Now semicolons are not mandatory. And here is what I mean. Now if you see these two statements, one of them has a semicolon and the other one doesn't. Let's log them to the console and see how they behave. Both Washington and USA are logged here to the console successfully. This definitely means that semicolons are not mandatory, it's your choice. But I would recommend that you use semicolons at the end of all your statements. This makes your code look cleaner and also helps prevent errors when you try to minify or compress your JavaScript files. That's more or less about it, the general syntax of JavaScript. Let's start looking at various data types in the next lesson. Thanks for watching.